In this lesson, we're going to learn how to draw Lewis structures. We've looked at Lewis dot notation. This is an extension of that that just gives us a description of how atoms are bonded together in molecules. The first thing that we do when we're drawing a Lewis structure for a molecule is determine the total number of valence electrons if the atoms were to have octets. Now, most atoms will have eight valence electrons when they have an octet. There are a few exceptions. Most notably is the hydrogen. Hydrogen is only going to have two electrons because that's how many electrons can be held in the first energy level. Once it reaches that two, it's considered to be a full shell, and that's what we mean by an octet. All other atoms, when they have a full shell, they will have eight valence electrons to make that octet. There are other exceptions that are going to be, we'll see, we'll cover those later. Let's look at an example. In water, we have two valence electrons in each hydrogen if they were to have an octet. There are two hydrogen atoms in a water molecule, so that gives us a total of four valence electrons from hydrogen if it were to have an octet. If we look at the oxygen, it's going to have eight valence electrons if it were to have an octet. There's only one oxygen atom, so that gives us a total of eight valence electrons from oxygen that are contributing to the total of 12 for all the atoms if they were to have an octet. The next thing we do is determine the actual number of valence electrons in the molecule. The easiest way to determine how many valence electrons each atom has is simply look at the Roman numeral group number for S and P. S and P elements are really the only elements we're going to look at in drawing out Lewis structures. Those Roman numerals tell you the number of valence electrons. So group 1 has one valence electron. Group number of Roman numeral 5 has five valence electrons. You can also do this by counting over the number of columns in the S and P elements only, or by looking at the regular number, and if the number is over 10, simply looking at the ones place. So group 17 would have seven valence electrons because the seven's in the ones place. If we extend our example now to water, we will see that hydrogen in group one has a one valence electron. There are two hydrogen atoms in the molecule. That gives us two electrons from the hydrogen. With oxygen, it's in group 16, or Roman numeral six, so it has six valence electrons. There is only one oxygen atom in the molecule, so that gives us six actual electrons from oxygen to give us a total of eight valence electrons in all contributed by each atom. We then look at the difference between these two and divide by two. So we had 12 valence electrons if everything had an octet, minus eight for valence electrons that they actually have to give us a four. That value of four is then divided by two. This tells us then how many lines we're going to use in our Lewis structure. And for our lines, each line represents two electrons that are being shared between the atoms. So then we draw the structure. A couple things before we draw it. We're going to determine a centrally located atom. If there's going to be one, there's going to it usually is going to be uh, the atom that has the least number of valence electrons. We then connect the atoms that are on the outside to the central atom using one bond or line, and that one line is going to represent two electrons being shared between the two atoms. If connect all of the atoms with one line, which would represent what we call a single bond, and then we still have some left over, we simply add another line to represent two lines or possibly even three lines between the atoms. And we will see examples of this happening. Once you add the lines, we now look and complete the octets around each element. And we're going to complete that by adding dots to represent electrons that are not part of a chemical bond, but are part of the atom in its valence shell. In our water, we are going to have oxygen as our centrally located atom. Even though it has the least number of valence electrons, hydrogens are never going to be in the center. We arrange them symmetrically, and we add lines between the hydrogens and the oxygens to represent the shared electrons. Notice that we have one line here 
That line represents two electrons being shared between this hydrogen and this oxygen. This line represents the two electrons being shared between this hydrogen and this oxygen. Right now, the oxygen molecule, I'm sorry, the oxygen atom has four electrons represented. Each hydrogen has two electrons represented. Because the hydrogens have two electrons represented, they're considered full because they only need two electrons to make the octet. The oxygen, on the other hand, needs to have four more electrons. It's got four electrons total represented by the two lines, but we need to represent a total of eight. And to do that, we simply draw dots in pairs on opposite sides to complete the octet. We'll see a couple of examples that involve polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions just extend what we have just done with the addition of adding or subtracting valence electrons to the actual number of valence electrons in the molecule. Again, we'll see an example of this so that you'll see what you need to do for those.